Hello, my name is Joe Fab, and I'm a documentary filmmaker, an advocate for medical aid in dying, and a supporter of Compassion and Choices. Through CNC, I've had the chance to speak with a number of physicians who are leaders in end-of-life care, pioneers and experts on medical aid in dying. Each of them is very inspiring to me. For example, Dr. Corey Carroll. When I have my colleagues, you know, look at me as like Dr. Death, I say, I took an oath to do no harm. And helping a patient navigate a 100% predictable end of life, giving them options, and then supporting them through that, that's what physicians are supposed to do. Not doing that is harm. Dr. Carroll is now in his fourth decade as a board certified family physician in Colorado. He is a longtime advocate for medical aid in dying, and he testified in support of the Colorado End of Life Options Act, which was passed in 2016. In early 2022, he became National Medical Director for Compassion and Choices. I want to help people live. I want to help people stay healthy. I want to have, help people have functionally good lives. But I also know they're going to die. But if I can give them a peaceful transition from this physical life, that closes the deal. I think, I think I'm doing a really good job as a doc. Without exception, every single person is going to die. And to say to a human being who has now been diagnosed with a terminal illness, um, sorry, there's nothing we can do other than just let this take its course. And yes, we can help with pain management, etc. cetera. Um, for many of us, that's just not acceptable. The technology of medicine is great, but there's limits. Um, I've had several patients over my career who have started on uh, chemotherapy for uh, mainly for cancer, and they have found it to be intolerable. And um, they'll go back to their oncologist and say, I just can't do this. When a person makes a decision such as, I do not want to continue with this chemotherapy, I do not want to have this procedure done, it's not our job to tell them what to do and to force the technology on them. It is their decision to make that choice. And then it's my obligation to help them and follow with that, not to um, leave their side and, and tell them, sorry, can't, can't help you. If you don't do it my way, I can't help you. That's, that's not the job of a physician. It's not wrong to give a, a patient options, but I think it's wrong to tell them um, be, to be maybe overly optimistic, but we should provide them with options, educate them on what those uh, options are going to potentially do, what they're not going to do. And then similar to medical aid and dying, give them the choice of pursuing it. And even if they decide to pursue it, they can stop and say, no, I don't want to do this anymore. Whether it's getting chemotherapy, whether it's I'm, I have medications on the shelf to end my life, I've decided this is not what I want to do. That is completely fine and perfectly acceptable. And so I would encourage any colleague of mine that is contemplating this to, to research it. We're not in this alone. There are countless of physicians that are prescribing, that are comfortable, that want to, that should be mentors to other physicians. I absolutely respect and understand my colleagues who have belief systems that, that don't think this is a good idea. There's no law that says any physician is coerced to do this or any patient or any pharmacist. And so what I try to do is respect my colleagues, but I ask them to respect me and to respect my patients and those physicians that are still contemplating 
my experience has been nothing but positive. So in the terminality of life, there's one more place physicians can participate and make a difference in the life of their patient, in the life of the patient's family, and do what we're supposed to do, which is take care of our patients and allow them to choose how to live and also how to die.